Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. And I'm well. And thank you for doing this uh, early your time. It's 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 a pleasure. It, 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 it very interestingly, I've had um, two or three different meetings. Uh, uh, people asking me whether I could do seven o'clock today, and I'm so I'm afraid not. I'm afraid. This is the seven o'clock slot that is already well taken. It's oh. very interesting. Some, some days are like that. Some days are um, you find yourself where everybody wants those particular times. But um, it's a pleasure, pleasure to be here. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, as always, for your support. And uh, I think we can kick it off. We have about a minute. Hi, Ajay. Um, and uh, we have Charles here uh, also. Oh, Morning, Robin. Is Charles. Sorted out our tech. That's the most important thing on these things. So thank you. Yes, and he is he's he's the he's behind all of what we are doing and has uh, has has really driven this and is super excited to have you as a debut uh, guest of honor as we launch this. So uh, pardon the sort of uh, protocol around it. I know you're a pretty cool uh, board member, but I think Charles <laughs> Charles, you may switch on your video and say hi to Robin. I know you were so excited to have Robin here today. So, well, anyway, that's a, thanks. For live you. up to it. Live up to the expectations, Charles. I'll do my very best, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it, Robin. I, I'm just turning on my video, but Vaishala has been extremely kind. It's, I mean, this couldn't have been possible without her and Ajay. And obviously, you were taking out time for us. So, really appreciate it. Yeah, we, we couldn't have done anything without Ajay. So that's where the buck stops as far as all our initiatives are concerned. So anyway. It's, it takes a team, takes a team yeah. to make anything happen. Never a one person thing. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so um, Charles, I look for you to let me know when we're good to go. It's 12. I know Robin's taken out about 45 minutes and I feel that in, in, in any call, if we can save a few minutes, there's no harm done there. So uh, let me just kick it off if that's okay, Charles. So you want me to wait? Uh, I'll, I'll take join. one more minute, Vaishali, because we're getting like uh, four participants every second. Maybe one more okay. minute just for people to settle okay. in. I can start sharing the screen uh, for your set, uh, for a bit, if that's all right. Whatever to get ready and going. So over to you, Charles, and just let me know and I'll start speaking. <laughs> Fantastic. <coughs> so Robin, just before, are we on or Charles, yes. are we on? Oh, yes, okay. Vishali, I think we so could say go. my comments. Yeah. Uh, okay, great, 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 great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Charles. Robin, thank you for taking out time. Ajay, as always, thank you for all your support uh, to make all of this happen. Um, renewers, a big hello to all of you. Uh, this is quite a historic uh, moment in Renew's history of um, you know initiatives and a very special one. Um, and thank you, Charles, for really uh, bearing, if I could say, being the torch bearer here and uh, pushing ahead. Uh, none of this would have been possible without your commitment, collaboration, and really excellence of getting this done with lightning speed. So uh, with that, I want, to, I want to welcome everybody to this session as we celebrate uh, the Pride Month. A little bit late, though. Um, but uh, as they say, it's better late than never. And uh, I'm so glad uh, that uh, Charles, uh, you know, from my team, uh, many of the renewers, uh, you may know him. He's a young, enthusiastic, uh, outstanding person um, in the uh, sustainability teams, comms team, my team, and all of what we do, he's a part of it. And, um, uh, you know, came up with this idea of launching and uh, the, um, you know, sort of the initiative uh, at uh, Renew and we were delighted. Uh, and it took us just a day to turn it around. So 
as in, in renewed style of doing things. Uh, so very delighted that uh, we are here with Robin, who is a leader, an absolute leader um, in this field and has uh, so kindly offered to be our first uh, guest of honor uh, as we launch this, uh, the initiative at uh, Pride. So Pride at Renew, uh, we did a bunch of things uh, in addition to listening, understanding, um, you know, what is it that we could do um, and what's the best way to do it. Uh, in the fastest way, we um, did. Uh, we we decided to uh, keep it simple, but yet uh, keep it sharp as well. So, as most of you know, June twenty second is a landmark uh, month uh, where, uh, uh, well, not only at Renew, but you know, I'm in London these days, and uh, Rob and I saw the Pride Parade here, which is really, <laughs> which is amazing. And I happened to be in Soho and uh, saw the action and the commitment and the fun and the enthusiasm. And it's really great to see uh, members, allies, everybody coming together for a common cause, um, uh, which is long overdue. So I'm delighted to see that not only Renew, but everywhere there is growing commitment to ensuring that, uh, you know, we are all on, uh, in this together and we do our bit to ensuring that uh, everybody can be who they are in a way where they can be more effective, just be better human beings. And we live in a place where it's a better place for all of us. And uh, I'm learning, I'm understanding, and I'm proud to say that I'm a learner here and I am really, uh, keen to uh, you know share it here uh, with the the support and people who know more and better than we do, and for all of us to be listeners and uh, allies in this, and uh, just to make renew um, a more uh, I would say um, uh, you know diverse workplace where everybody is uh, well understood for what they stand for. So very delighted to do. Uh, to, to, to launch this uh, at Renew. Uh, next slide, please. Um, uh, and I'm not going to take too much time because we have Robin here who's going to talk about uh, her experiences as a leader and what she thinks uh, we should do at Renew or we can do at Renew or perhaps some inspirational stories and experiences from her personal experiences, you know, professional and generally as a, as a leader and uh, in the area, but at Renew, we did uh, a few things. We sensitized uh, Renew, renewers uh, via emailers, by sharing stories, by quizzes, uh, having some awards and recognitions around the responses and participation. So we hope we have built more awareness than there was pre-June. And I think that's a small step but a good step in the right direction. Um, you know, we had, a, as you can see, a yummy cake, which I missed, but I'm sure uh, many of us enjoyed. So we had a lovely rainbow cake um, as well. And um, I think most importantly, what uh, we agreed uh, between Ajay, Charles and me when we discussed this was that this is just the beginning. And it's not only about us celebrating the Pride Month in June, but we're going to kind of make it a part of our DNA and do um, more bit by bit over the next few days, weeks, months. And I really look forward to that. I look forward to this shared journey. So once again, um, I'd like to bring on Robin, who needs no introduction. She's a distinguished board member. Um, she chairs the uh, Sustainability Committee at uh, uh, Renew and uh, really is a leader. Um, uh, and I want her to, you know, as I said, talk about Robin, please do share your experiences with us in a way where, you know, Renew can kind of get on this journey um, uh, slowly, steadily, and in the right direction. So over to you. And uh, Charles is now going to take over from here to um, engage, interact, moderate as may be required, field some questions. And Ajay is going to then um, uh, you know, uh, uh, make closing comments. And, um, uh, I, uh, and uh, so over to you, Robin. Uh, what a, what a, what's an introduction? 
I mean, it's, I, I hope I can. I hope I can live up now to this introduction. Um, I'm happy to freeform this if that makes sense, Charles. But if you want to, if you have a particular, okay, I'll do that then. Um, but by all means, uh, feel free to interrupt and ask questions. I, I think let, let me start by saying um, congratulations. Let, let me first acknowledge that the biggest and perhaps the most difficult step of all is to do what you've already done, which is to acknowledge that people who identify in the LGBTQ plus community um, don't have visibility. And so the minute that you put on, and I smiled as I saw the first slide with the rainbow um, flag plastered um, in a nice way uh, up a wind turbine. And, I, and I, I smiled to myself because it's that visibility that's so incredibly important. In the LGBT plus community, you can be completely invisible. You, you can choose to be. People who identify in that space don't have to make it known to everyone else. And they don't make it known to everybody else because they're frightened. They're frightened of the judgment and they're frightened of society's view and they're frightened that they'll upset their friends and they're frightened that they'll be uh, poorly included in a workforce. They may be excluded by family members or by colleagues that somehow they have to start um, identifying themselves in a different way. And so for Renew to do what they're doing, for Charles to be leading this with Fashali and with RJ um, in the background, I think is nothing short of fantastic and spectacular. And for that, I say happy Pride Month to you, albeit a couple of couple of days late. Um, let me tell you a little bit about my story, if that if that would be useful, um, because it's it's I'm a hundred years old, roughly, roughly. The, the screen makes me look a bit younger than that, but I'm roughly a hundred years old. So um, when I first started my career. Um, and most of you probably know, I'm a barrister by training, so I'm one of those people in wigs and gowns, which thankfully um, I sit I sit this morning joining you from New York where they, where people don't understand the difference between a barrister and a solicitor, but thankfully I'm talking to people who do understand that difference. Um, and in a very traditional, very traditional um, environment, professional environment, where women were had a dress code that was different to men where all of all, all these very different rules and requirements abounded and actually in a large part when I was in that space and began my career it wasn't that you were supposed to bring your whole self to work you were supposed to go to work wherever that was in any firm or at the bar and you were to become what they wanted you to become that was the mold and indeed as a barrister you wear a wig and you wear a gown and part of why you do that is so that you're not a person so that you are just an, a, a, an executive of the court, which is a really interesting thing to think about when you start life is that you actually are doing the very opposite of being yourself at work. You're being, you're being a, a, a tool for um, an organization. But that is draining and terrifying for people who have to then especially navigate the corporate world, which we're all in today. And so the ability to walk into work and know that you don't have to worry about when you describe your activities at the weekend who they were with that when you are booking your holidays you can book them in a way that enables you to acknowledge the people you may be going with and the room you might want it can talk to you about the challenges that it takes to walk in society in a place where not everybody's enlightened and not everybody feels your journey or wants you to be the way you are. And I have spent my life through my career making sure that every organization I'm part of acknowledges that unless a person can walk through the door and be who they are, they are constantly trying to pretend to be something else. They're constantly using up energy to be a different person to the one they really are. And that's exhausting because I can tell you, you can only be the very best person you can be. You are the best version of you. You are the most individual version of you. And the minute you try to be somebody else, you're never going to be as good because you can never be someone else. You can only ever be yourself, 100% yourself. So the more that all of us can do to include people and for people to feel safe in our environment, the more you're going to get 100% of the very best of every single person that comes into 
the an organization. On top of that, we tend to think about these things in a very selfish way in some ways. I identify as part of this community. Therefore, this is about me. But actually, I, I let, let me give you a very obvious statement, perhaps not that obvious, but both my parents are straight. And the amount of times that I have talked to people who have walked into my office or taken me aside and said, I think my son, my daughter, my brother, my sister, my very good friend, identifying this way and I don't know what to do about it. This is not something that is about inclusivity of just the individual. It's inclusivity of the entire piece. It's inclusivity to say, we help you on your journey. If you have somebody in your life who identifies in this community and is having a tough time, we are here to acknowledge who you are and who they are and who you may be in their life too. And that is powerful because it is looking after your family. The new family isn't just the people who come to work every day. It's the people who are your families that enable you to come to work every day and be very, very good at what you do. So let me give you another piece of the puzzle. This, it, we run multiple events and have done over many years at, at the firm I work for now or at the investment banks I used to work for. And the mental stress and strain of navigating what it is to be different is hard. And the most powerful people to help in this space are allies. And allies aren't perfect. They don't, they don't walk on water. None of us are perfect, but we can be good people. We know what it means to be a good person. You and I know um, what it means when you're in an argument and you maybe are, are a little bit too personal or a little bit too strong-minded in something you might say. And we know after that argument or after that conversation, we could have done a better job of that. You know, that moment where you go, Ooh, yes, I probably stepped over a line then, I went too far. None of us are perfect, but we can be good people. We can be good friends. We can be good colleagues. We don't have to experience something ourselves to understand that experience is of, of somebody else is important and valuable. When I look at graduate or postgraduate intakes at the banks or at my firm. I will tell you that the people who talk to us, come straight people, will come and look at the events that we do in our diversity networks, like Pride, to see how inclusive the organization is. They don't necessarily have to be part of that community to want to know that the firm, that your organization is culturally aligned with, they, with them and their beliefs. So understand the reach of this is for the person, for the individual, for me, very selfishly, but it's for my family. It's for our brothers and sisters and parents. And as parents, it is because if we want to work with the very best people, we have to engage and celebrate people in their entirety, in their fullness and in their completeness of being individuals. And because if we want to attract really phenomenal people to work alongside us, they want to see that we embrace those values. You don't have to understand everything or everyone to value people. You can get it wrong. It's OK. All of the different pronouns, all of the different variations, all of the different colours and difference in our society, it's not there for you to become a PhD in. It's there for you to acknowledge and embrace. Um, and allies are critical to this. And it demonstrates how you are willing to treat your fellow human being. And everything that I have seen at Renew tells me that this is an organization that cares very deeply about its people. And it's not something, it's not an organization I'd want to be part of if it didn't. So I am very keen that to be part of any journey here, but to have the tough questions, it is it isn't easy. I think renewers are more than up to the task. I think you have smart people in great places doing enormously brilliant work, which is going to change the face of society, which is going to bring about, be part of one of the most important, if not the most important challenge the world faces. At the same time, 
how extraordinary to be leading the field in diversity and equity and inclusion. So is by way of introduction, does that does that help set the stage? Absolutely, Robin, and it's powerful as always. And uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, so last time you were here, you said something that stuck with some of us. Uh, you said, for in inequality to sustain, all it requires is an action. And there's a need for active work to redress imbalance in the workplace. It is so powerful. And honestly, that has been a strong motivating factor for some of us here to put together the first ever Pride Month at Renew. And while some of us are still figuring out pride, rest of us are invigorated as we are renewed, no pun intended, our uh, commitment to accepting and celebrating differences. Uh, I think the first question, what according to you is pride? And how have you seen the pride movement evolve, especially in the corporate space over the years? Pride, you know, it's a great question. Pride to me is twofold. One, it's to acknowledge progress to date. It's to celebrate to champion, to bow down before, to acknowledge the sacrifices of people who have gone before me, certainly, and have moved equality into the place it's at today. Um, and it's very easy to ridicule or to be frightened of the queer community, especially as it presented it in Stonewall. You know, it, it's hard, it, it, where you have these black flamboyant drag queens who are out there strutting the stuff vogue like in our societies that extreme version of what it is to be a representative of of the community but without that without that recognition without that bravery and courage in the face of absolute discrimination if you, if you look at any social movement i am stunned by and in awe of the courage that regular people, normally underrepresented, normally poor, normally pilloried people suffer, and yet they carry on. They don't sit in my seat of privilege to do what they do. They sat in the seat of poverty and of exploitation and of, and of brutality. And yet every single day, they were themselves and they fought a fight which, but for them, we wouldn't be having this conversation. So pride for me is to acknowledge and to thank the people who came before me. It's also a point in the calendar, and I'm, I, I love Fashali for saying what she did and, and for many other reasons for that matter. But the, the fact is pride is a, a, a yeah, the pride month is a fantastic month, but it's about being visible in the whole year. But for me, Pride is also about saying we still got a journey to go. It is still about reaching that level of equality and inclusion, which means we don't talk about this anymore because we don't have to. Because we are just good human beings to one another and we respect each other's decisions and we expect each other's lifestyles and we, we respect good values that run through all of those things. Difference is about um, celebration. It's having pride in the people that you know and of the richness of your life. So for me, pride is twofold. One, say thank you to acknowledge, to recognize the courage of those who go before us. And two, to acknowledge and recognize the role we have to continue that journey so we don't have to talk about this anymore. From a corporate perspective, Charles, you asked the question, it's changed dramatically um, from a time where people didn't identify, didn't come out, weren't out in the workplace, weren't celebrated, um, were frightened, still are a little bit, to be fair, um, to a place where we can have events like this, where we can talk about the issues. And actually, I think it's also evolved in an interesting way for me because We've gone from that bluntness of acknowledging that if you are part of LGBTQ community, you should feel valued and you can identify as yourself to a point where we can start to talk about what it means to be part of that community, what it means for a firm and for an organization to embrace people in that community. And they're very different things. I think we have to acknowledge that it's confusing. I think if you're straight and if you don't have, or you don't think you have, uh, friends who are or family members who may be identifying this space 
how do you even start these conversations? How do you even talk about our personal pronouns? Um, how, how, why does that matter? What's the difference between being gay or being bi or being pan or being this? I mean, all of these words, all of these words, it's all across Instagram and TikTok and, you know, and Snapchat and blah, blah, blah. Um, and it is so complicated and people are so frightened to say the wrong thing as well. They're like, oh, I had this conversation because it's so, what if I say it wrong? What if I do something wrong? Say it wrong. Um, I don't know how to do they, them. I don't know, you know, that sort of stuff. And yet, actually, we all do. We, we actually do. When you don't know somebody or somebody talks about um, that they're going to meet a, 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 you know, a particular individual and they don't know their, their, their gender, they don't know what it is, they will say, who are they? What do they do? What is their name? Where do they live? It's actually really simple, some of this stuff. I heard a, I heard a, a comedian the other day say, um, you know, all of this stuff about how confused we are about gender and all of these personal pronouns, we seem to learn about COVID and Omicron and all those different words really quickly. Why can't we do this? So there is something here which is about there being barriers and about there being difference in those things. I think for me, what's interesting about the the corporate space is we've gone beyond now the, the acknowledgement that the gay community exists and we're now in a space where people are trying to understand what that means and the differences within the community, the journeys within the community. When I was growing up um, and when I just was starting work, I guess, it was after AIDS had really devastated the world and the fear around AIDS. And let me give you a piece of just LGBTQ history. You know, the, the gay male community and the lesbian community have lots of times been at odds with one another. They, they, you, you could understand why if you think about it for a minute, right? The, the, the Venn diagram of crossover of what they're most interested in and how they see the world is very different. But it was the lesbian community that rallied around the gay community with the AIDS epidemic. And that saw a material change in the way that the community globally worked with one another and worked together. And that was a real watershed moment in the way that people started to think about rights and responsibilities and the care needed. So as we drive forward, as we move forward into the next century, um, it's about hopefully that fluidity and us understanding people um, being about individuals and not who we choose to have our relationships with and not what happens within our private space and not about somehow me being better or worse than you, but just being different and being valued in society for that difference. So the corporate world has changed this conversation. 15 years ago, very unwell. It was happening, but it was a very different conversation. And it was, it was um, not in this format and not in this way. So be proud of yourselves for just managing this conversation the way you are, because it's enormous. It is, you know, one step for mankind and all of that. This is a huge step and it feels so that it's not. It is, it's massive. So I congratulate you. I'm rather proud to be part of this, to be fair, Charles. <laughs> so hope that I'll ask that question. Yes. By the way, if you uh, see something, see something moving behind me, I have a dog that's sitting on my chair as a, as a cushion. So I apologise if she starts to move around and I look like I'm squirming. I'm not. I've just got a dog that wants to get off the chair. Anyhow, go ahead. It's, it's only helpful to have a matching uh, shirt with. Uh, I think the only thing I've done. I've matched my entire wardrobe to my dog. Um, <laughs> and, and the art at the back, just in case. Yeah, the, 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 art, the art at the back. You can see, you see my pants are in the back too. Exactly. What else, Charles? What What else is there? Anything? Right, so, uh, uh, Robin, you give us you answer the question and much more. Uh, shall I mention? Uh, I think uh, the fact that yeah, we are proud of starting this we are proud of how far we come and but then miles and miles ahead like this is just the start and i think that is the core sentiment which core team over here has really embraced uh so while we were having these conversations i think with aishali ajay i think the one thing that kept saying is creating a safe space where lgbtq plus community means 
creating the right inclusive environment for all underrepresented groups. Yep. Now, uh, I'm using going on the same quote which you used last time again, which is, given your experience of navigating being the other, which again was a very powerful phrase, uh, what are some of the best practices that could be integrated in the corporate workplace that celebrates LGBTQ plus members and also for driving a sense of allyship within the organization? We completely understand uh, there's a lot of contextualization that goes into it, but in your experience, driving the DNI initiative, both at the LGBTQ front and more than that, beyond that, what are some of the best practices that we need to be, we could, you know, consider? So, do, do not, this is something I've seen. It may or may not work with Renew, and it's something you should debate and talk about yourselves. One, visibility, what you've just done. Have allyship flags, have rainbow flags, not just in June, have them all year round. Celebrate what it is for difference throughout the community. And I tell this story, and I think I told it before, but is the, you know, when I sat down with my, with the Pride team in Man Group, one of the things that they said was, we, we don't know who else is, is it identifies in this community or is an ally really in this community. You know, it's not like when you walk in somewhere and if you're a black American and you can walk into an office and you can see other black Americans, it, it, it just does, what it does on the tin. Women, you know, you, you, you can see whether there are senior women in an organization or not because you walk through the door and at least you can visually, they may not identify that way, but they can visually be seen. The gay community is not so. So we came up with these, you know, had pride flags and we had ally flags, little tiny ones, so big. And we, we, we said to people, if you want one, we'll buy it for you, you know, we'll go to Amazon. God bless Amazon. And we, you know, we, we bought 30. And I, I, I've lost count now. I, I, we, got, we got pilloried for not enough flags and please could we have more. Um, corporate branding, not everything, but have pads, have pens, have gilets, have something with a rainbow renew, whatever it may be. In fact, rainbows work rather well with Renew, it seems to me, given everything else that um, it's doing. So that visibility, one, putting it out there. Um, and it's a year round thing, not a June thing. Um, I think the other piece is to create a safe space where people can ask questions. This is about making sure that people who do not identify in this community are safe to ask questions and to engage in the conversation. That this doesn't become about somehow the LGBTQ plus plays being somehow sacred, that it is we are all right and everyone else is all wrong. And um, that's not the case. You know, we also, it, to, to promote any type of inclusive, inclusivity and equity, people have to feel safe, safe to ask questions, safe to make mistakes, safe to not know everything. Um, and that safety is something that you all have to encourage. Somebody should be able to ask any, ask me, what are my personal pronouns? Why does it matter? What does it ma why does it matter that you do this thing, have these personal pronouns? Why, what's, that, what's that about? They didn't invent that, you know. They wouldn't have that years ago. Why do we need that now, right? So ask the questions, what it's like, and 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 make it real the other thing is tell stories tell as many stories as you can about why it's important to you to your family to your friends to the people you love tell stories because it is about human experience it is about individuals um, we all have stories of what it's like to be on the wrong end of prejudice we all of us me included in that very much so have those stories and we all know what it's like to be excluded, straight or gay, right? Let's be clear. If I, if I asked any one of you to think of a time in your lives when you felt like you were on the outside, where you were chosen for the sports team or chosen to be the lead in the school play or chosen to be your best friend's bachelor, blah, blah, whatever it may be. You, you might have been 11 or seven or 27 but most of us will have experienced what it's like being on the outside, what it's like not to be the cool kid. And if you felt like that once, if you can remember that, you know what it is like to be on the outside all the time. 
that is what it is like if you are not part of an organization. If you are never the person who's included. So we all know what it's like. That's the interesting thing. We all know it. I don't know anybody in life who has who has had this breeze through things, whose hearts haven't been broken, who didn't do the wrong thing, who wasn't chosen at the wrong point, who didn't miss the right goal, who didn't do any of those things. So tell stories. Tell stories what it's like when somebody gets your name wrong, for example. And then think about that with personal pronouns and what it must be like when somebody continuously refers to you in a way that you don't identify. So maybe I call Charles Chuck. Who doesn't want to be called Chuck? Who wants to be called Charles? I hope that's right, Charles, by the way. I've never asked. But you know, have those kind of conversations and create safety and create humanity and create stories and journeys and the richness of our societies, in particular in India, are built on stories through the generations. And this, if ever there was a place where those stories could come to life and feel real and spectacular in their ordinariness, it's in India. So that's my, I think my advice on how visibility matters and how inclusivity matters and how stories matter and how safety for everyone, straight or gay, matters. Oh, again, really real and powerful, Robin. Your own engagement, asking questions, sharing narratives, explicit contextualization. These are definitely aspects that we could consider implementing in Renew's context. And yeah, it's as real as it could get. Um, the one of the most popular questions we got from renewers prior to the session was, how can I be an ally in the workplace? And I'm sure you all the, uh, can touch upon it in your intro. So uh, you know, what can we do as individuals? So you already given the, the organization perspective and at the macro level, as individuals, what can we do to start this journey of allyship? And, and this is an interesting one, which I really felt was really cool. How can we keep our organization accountable to diversity, equity, and inclusion? Both great questions. I love renewers, they come up with brilliant questions. So um, first question, how can we be better allies? Um, it's a very odd thing, but I, I, I am a, um, I'm an ally to others um, in, in my life and in my firm. Uh, and for example, a, a perfect example is I am the sponsor of, but also a, 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 at the heart of it, an ally of the black community. I don't have that experience. I didn't grow up black. I, I grew up privileged and white. Um, the black experience in London and the black experience in the US, completely different. Um, I, and, and yet the most important thing I have done in trying to be an ally as an individual is to listen and to ask questions and to step up so that my black colleagues don't have to. One of the most powerful things about allyship is not being nice on your sofa, right? It's not about saying, no, 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 I, I'm, I'm very supportive of the LGBTQ plus community, or I know, is it terrible what happens to the black community? Or, it's not about that. Allyship is not sympathy. Allyship is not about inaction. Allyship is about standing up and doing something. It's about raising your voice when others can't. It's about bringing it, those issues into the debate when people are not in the room to hear you. It's around representation. And it's around action so that people in those communities know, know, unequivocally know you are there for them. And not that you are trying to be them and not that you have their experience. But that you are a voice for that community and that you are a voice for inclusivity. And you're not perfect, but that is what you're there to do. And at every opportunity, you live that. At every opportunity, you hold an organization accountable for the language used around you, for the sense of what it is to be, a perfect example, another one. Um, I'm not Muslim, um, that isn't my religion. 
but we have uh, a lot of people who are Muslim in my firm and we did a session on what it meant to be Muslim and what Ramadan was about because people team leaders and managers were setting up team lunches or dinners or events or bringing in food during the day during the month of Ramadan because they didn't understand they didn't understand what it meant they didn't understand why it was important to people who were Muslim to observe Ramadan it's thinking like that it's the ability to turn around and say what do I need to anticipate how do I need to think about this if I hear somebody using coarse or horrible language about women or about the LGBTQ plus community call it out call it out that's not who we are that's not what Renew's about that's not us we don't do that here don't just stand by and wait for your LGBTQ plus employees to say what they want and say yeah right it's not like it's not cheerleading it's not in the background it's in the game it's being a player in the game that's allyship and it's hard to be an ally I mean it takes courage to be an ally it takes courage to to be willing to be wrong to be out of your depth to not have that experience but to put that into the conversation and to say is this the very best we can be for these people in this community? Is that the very best I can do to help? Show the mirror every morning or in every night, whatever you want to do. I try not to look at mirrors very often. Um, but look at yourself and every single day say, are you that? Did you do the best you could do? Was that the very best you could have done today? You know, don't just go along with it. Just don't. Don't give visibility, give voice, be powerful. Don't expect you to be perfect, but be powerful. And don't just sit on your sofa, step in. That's what it means to be an ally. I am as angry for my black colleagues, for Black Lives Matter. I am as hurt for them and for what they have to do in bringing up their kids in America. If you have a son, in America who is black, you teach them different lessons than if for, than my white son. You teach them different things. You teach them when they're 17, that if they're stopped by the cops in a car, to act differently than, if, uh, th than the way I have to think about teaching my son. That is wrong. And I will go toe to toe with anybody who wants to argue with me on it, toe to toe. And that's my passion. So I'm an ally to that community. But I will fight that fight and I will stand there and I will shout about it as loud as I can. So I add my voice or I am the voice in the room. That's allyship. So Chuck, I hope that, that you see Chuck? No, see Charles? That's what I'm talking about. That's the point. And so if when I say Chuck or when I say him or when I say blah, RJ and Vishali are the people in the room to say, hey, listen, that's not what Charles likes to be called. You're being disrespectful. Try harder. Not you. That's the point. Does that help? Absolutely. Yes, Robin. And I think I'm glad, like I think one thing uh, which I really enjoy having you in the sessions is the constant recall to the constant the, the 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 consistency in the messaging. I think it's again a call back to active uh, work to redress imbalance at the workplace. It's again a call to, you know, uh, you know, you have to be proactive in terms of anticipating what is required to each and every one of your teammates. And uh, what you just said right now has been something which has been extremely relatable for me the last few weeks, be it uh, the support which I got it from my Shali or Ajay uh, in terms of Manisha was taking a massive front, who will be leading it from the uh, front uh, moving forward in terms of every other person who has helped with starting with the emailers or sourcing the rainbow cake to everyone who has been zoned in because they believed in it though they did not understand the challenges from the nuances of what we're fighting for but still we are like yes this is something which we have to do and we are happy to contribute over and above what we're already doing for Renew. so what you just said i think we already are in a good place at Renew in terms of allies and it's just a matter of just pushing and taking to the next level 
uh, before I hand it over to Ajay, are there any closing remarks that you want to leave us by? Because uh, it seems like we get a golden nugget every time you are online. Well, <laughs> I think for me, I also, this is fun. What's more fun than getting to enjoy people in our lives? What is more fun than being part of and learning something and, and, and enjoying the richness of the life that's around us? What is more valuable in our societies than doing that? And it is heartwarming. It is nothing short of that moment where when we leave our jobs, when we retire, when we, you know, whatever it is that we do eventually, it, it is our human connection. It is our legacy of life and the impact we have on other people that is what's reflected back. It isn't as much <clears throat> as I like to think of it, the most important decision I'm probably going to make today around some such blah, transaction or whatever it may be. This is about the impact of the people I work with and the people I have had the pleasure of being around. That's what it's about. And we, we have a, I have my dog who's, sorry, sorry. who's unwilling to go for a walk. Anyway, um, so, so the point being, that richness is a celebration. It's not, all, it's not all doom and gloom. There's something rather fantastic about enriching your life with other people. There's something brilliant about it. I am a better person for the richness of the people around me. I am a better person for having the privilege of working with Samantha, with Shali, and with the rest of the Renew board and being part of your journeys. It's with enormous pride and a sense of commitment that I enjoy the work I do with you all. Um, and it makes me a better person. And I'm lucky to have you all in my lives. And, and I think that is that switch. It isn't just hard work. It's an utter pleasure. And it's something that I am a better person for at the end of the day. So that's my closing, I suppose, remark in this. Um, uh, and Ajay, I'm hoping that that's okay. But uh, oh, for Shally, here you go. For Shally's raised a finger. Ajay, and I know what that means. Sorry. <laughs> Ajay, with your permission, I just wanted to make one small comment and then over to you because you're the person behind uh, and who's going to take it forward and all of that and we're going to be there to work with you but uh, uh, Robin I just have been so impressed uh, with the dignity uh, you know with which you show the leadership your leadership in this area and that's something which is very inspirational and very impressive and I, ha I have a couple of stories which came to my mind and as Ajay knows a lot of stories come to my mind when I'm in conversation but I don't have the time, I'll share it with you another time, but I'll just allude to it. It's about brown people in cities like New York, et cetera, have gone through, I feel, similar experiences as they've gone and found a spot for themselves in the world and they have to struggle with this and all they bring with them is their intellect and confidence to move ahead. And perhaps that's, uh, I, I, that was an analogy which kept coming to my mind, you know, when my son went to Andover, and he had to struggle between Sid and Siddhant, and he settled for Siddhant. And that was his college essay, which was very interesting. I, I just feel that we're gonna come back as we take this initiative forward with learnings, hopefully for you to see how we can run this initiative in, our, uh, in the grassroots of uh, India, which would require caution, safety, and a lot of new nuances which I'm sure we can put on the table and say, ah, that's a new one, which I picked up. And this is how we can come up with local strategies in, in countries like India to ensure that it is a comprehensive movement. With that, uh, more later from me, but now from Ajay. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Robin and Charles. But over to you, Ajay. Sure. Thanks, Ashali. And thanks, Robin, for... Uh... Uh, for the communication or the conversation that you had with us, I think it has been fairly inspiring and quite a few uh, few experiences that you shared. I think those will definitely help us as we build our way forward on this uh, on this journey. As far as
as uh, Rene was concerned, while uh, Charles came across to us, we definitely took that as an opportunity and we picked up that at least as a, as a part of this uh, initiative, we will try to go ahead and and look at sensitization because that was something which was extremely crucial from an organization's perspective. As a country and as a society, I think India is still coming up the curve as far as the overall understanding across uh, across uh, various uh, groups of people within the country is concerned, various uh, communities are concerned. I think people are still coming up the curve. And therefore, we decided that as far as this year is concerned, we'll try to look at uh, two or three things which we would try to do. Sensitization was an important element. Going across and demonstrating it in um, in clear terms was again something which was important and that is where the rainbow flag along with the renew logo uh, that came across and also looking at how we were trying to go through the mail-based communications and the talks that we went through as you rightly said i don't think this is something which should be limited to a particular month or for a particular week i think it is more of a round the ear activity and we should continuously or rather we should continue to be focused on on this journey till the time all individuals within the organization come to a stage where they feel proud to be a part of this uh, this initiative they are able to they are able to relate to each other better they are able to feel comfortable and safe in each other's presence and everybody gives gets an equal opportunity across the organization so i think that's a longish journey and uh, we stay committed to take it forward and uh, with support from Vaishali and Sumant, we will continue to move forward and as charles uh, indicated we will continue to lean on to you in terms of getting more insights and uh, more guidance on this journey. And we will try to incorporate it and take it forward from there. So thank you so much once again, and uh, looking forward to staying in touch with you on this topic. Sounds good. Thank you, team. I genuinely feel, look at me as a resource and um, I'm really at your service. So thank you. It's always a pleasure.